So we don't actually have the milk frother. I do like it frothed, but the induction will do the exactly same thing, just a bit unfrothed. Okay. And hot. Jasper and Rooney. Right, what are you up to today, mate? Well, we are actually making a, an Australian-inspired damper. Oh, yum. Okay, tell us about the ingredients. Macadamias, chocolate chips, which have been cut up into halves, some butter, lemon myrtle, essential oil, and if you can, it's also doTERRA. Beautiful. Some... Well, I've already talked about these. Salt, a bottle of beer, but zero. Yeah, they are zeros. And then some self-racing flour, the healthy baker. Perfect. We're going to mix all this up and I even get to help mum. Oh, and also my name is Sir Mixer. <laughs> is it? <laughs> okay, so basic damper. Let's get it going. I've got the Weber preheated. Awesome. For 15 minutes on high, and then we'll drop it down to medium for our damper. Yeah, yummy. Bake. Sounds good. Jasper was literally asleep like two seconds ago, and I said to him, I'm making damper, and he flew out of bed quicker than I expected to help. So this is awesome. Here comes the yumminess. <laughs> Okay, in it goes to a medium heat Weber with the convection tray and trivet. Now, it'll probably take between half an hour and 40 minutes to cook. We'd suggest checking it around the 15, 20 minute mark, which we'll do. We are going to make a cup of coffee, get ourselves organized, and then we're gonna have a chat about everything that you need to know before you come out here to experience Uluru. So, Polly, let's go get a coffee and get that happening and then we're gonna have some breakfast oh my god yum. hot so damper yeah, same with me that's my breakfast <laughs> okay okay first check that's looking pretty good I think probably another 20 25 minutes so we'll set another timer and let's get chatting Anybody else think that finding the right camp chair is like finding a really good life partner? I mean, I feel pretty confident that I've found the right life partner and now I feel pretty confident that we've found the right camp chairs and we've been getting loads of questions about them since we picked them up a couple of months ago. So it's time to share all the details with you guys because we just love them. They're awesome. They are from Stratus Outdoors. Now our good mate Bodie McCormack down there at Sandgate actually introduced us to this brand and we love everything about it. They are a local Sunshine Coast family who are campers themselves and also really passionate about the environment and we just felt like their values and their business ethos really fit with what we love as well so we were pretty excited to try them out now these are called the all day chair and you could quite literally sit in it all day every day and be very very happy what we love about them is that they can be completely recycled so the frame is made from aluminium the armrests are bamboo and this canvas seat material 
is made from 60 post-consumer plastic bottles. How cool is that? So not only does it look good, not only does it feel really good under your bum, it's also really good for the environment. Now my favorite feature about these chairs is the three stage reclining positions. So you can adjust as the day goes on, depending on what you're wanting to do. I have said to the boys, when I'm in the total recline position, mummy is out of order. Don't even, don't even think her name. Don't even speak her name. That's my five minutes of peace. And of course, at night time, to be able to recline back into that position and stargaze has just been awesome. So we are so happy to have partnered with Stratus Outdoors and they are offering a 15% discount for our feel good community. How cool is that? So if you're looking for a new life partner when it comes to camping, definitely check them out on the gear page of our website using that feel good code. For now, I'm going to put myself out of order. Maybe order up a glass of wine from the husband. What do you think? Going down. From Uluru. So awesome. So good. Okay, it is a little bit chilly, but that's yeah. okay. We are rugged up and we have got the damper on the Weber ready to go in about 20, 25 minutes. So yeah. we're going to make this fairly fast paced, but this is literally everything that you will need to know if you are coming out to the rock mm -hmm. and you want to have the best experience, the safest experience, be prepared mm -hmm. and have everything mm -hmm. ready to go and still be in awe of the experience. You'll be able to make the most of your time here. Yeah, it's all of those little bits of information that will really help you when you're planning your trip out here. So you don't get out here and go, oh, damn, we didn't. Yeah, I wish know. I thought of that, you know. I'll do it next time. Yeah, exactly. Because there may not be a next time, right? Exactly, we've made notes because there are plenty of those little tips. Okay, just an update. If you were to go the fastest route on bitumen from the Gold Coast, it's 3,250 kilometres. Yeah, exactly. Adelaide's 1,580 kilometres. Melbourne, 2,300 kilometres. Perth, 2,045 kilometres. How's that? That's amazing. That's coming over through that central road that actually spits you out near Katajuda. Amazing. Yeah. All right. So there's plenty of kilometres to travel, but the reward is lifelong yeah. i think i think it's one of those memories and experiences that will stay with you for life especially if you've got some family members to share it with yeah. this is how you're going to get the most out of this experience yeah 100 percent. and al springs is only 450 up the road so that i mean that's ah. pretty close really yeah walk in the park right <laughs> exactly <laughs> okay let's get into it we've broken it into a few different segments yeah. and that will be time coded in the description of this actual episode so you'll be able to jump straight to the bits that matter most to you. Awesome. Okay, let's start with essentials and safety information because that's Excellent. probably some of the most important stuff. Okay, we've got food, water, fuel, alcohol. Is yeah. that an essential? Um, yeah, for some people <laughs> if you've got it kids, is. It is. I think especially, especially if you've got teenagers. <laughs> well, especially when you're coming out to somewhere like this where there are mm -hmm. definitely rules and regulations around alcohol. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And communications. Fantastic. Let's get into it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Food, don't be like us. Rookie mistake, our third time crossing the quarantine border there in South Australia and we lost all our fruit and veggie or a, a large amount of it. So it's just crazy. be prepared uh, to know what borders you're crossing and what those quarantine rules are and you can check that out online. Yes, and we'll actually put links to a really great website that talks about the quarantine areas all around the country in our ebook as well, which subsequently great. I found 
after we cross the border. Yes, okay. <laughs> All right, and that ebook will be out at the end of this series. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. Ooh. In the next few weeks, you're going to see that live and available for less than the cost of a night's camping. All clickable links, everything you need to know. All awesome. Right. Um, so on the food, yes, mm -hmm. be aware of what you can bring through the various states, depending on which way you're coming here. Don't worry too much though. There is an amazing full-size IGA out here in the Yalara shopping complex. Oh. Yeah, my. All the food looks fantastic, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, look how fresh the produce is. Yeah, it looks great. For where you are being so remote, it is massive. It literally yeah. has everything you need. Yeah. And yes, the, the prices are anything from 40 to 50% inflated, sometimes 100% inflated, but it is what it is. Do you know, I was pleasantly surprised when we went in the other day at the cost of the fresh produce. It right. was a lot less than what I was anticipating it was going to be. So there you go. You can pretty much get anything out here. You can also get boxed water, 10 litres yes. of water. Uh, this is the best value water that we've seen uh, for outback remote travel. And it was about $7.50 for 10 litres, which is yeah. pretty good. Yeah, definitely. Last time we were out here, it was a lot more than that. <laughs> okay, fuel. You notice that the fuel has been increasing as we've got further uh, out back up through the centre, $2.49 uh, there, I think at Colgera. And then when we got to Curtin Springs, it was $3.25.9 mm. a litre. Ouch. Out here in Yalara, as it's known, it is $2.49.9 a litre. So you'll notice that's a huge difference between here and Curtin Springs. So yeah. if you can wait the extra 100 kilometres, great. If you're filling up with water at Curtin Springs, then make sure you fill your your fuel tank up as well and support them there. Yeah, awesome. Um, back on the water, you can fill your water at Curtin Springs as well, so fill up all of your tanks. The campground here, obviously if you're booking a powered site, a lot of them do have access to water as well, not all of them, so right. that is a good point to note, but if you do want to be off grid, then obviously you're going to need to come full with all of your tanks. Now it is a bit of a walk to the showers and to the toilets from here yeah. in the off grid or the overflow area where we're camped. Uh, when we were here last time, it was much busier. The tourism yeah. is actually quite down and, and that's in a lot of ways from what we've heard related to all the trouble that's been going on or publicly broadcast around Alice Springs. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to the safety and, and that part of it in a second. But when we were here and it's fuller, there are portable loos that are put in here as yeah. well, which makes it a lot more convenient. We've got the composting toilet, so no worries there. Yeah. There is a dump point just out towards near the airport, only five k's away, so you can continuously, you know, be able to dump and still yeah. be able to use your own facilities if that's easier. Yeah, exactly. Okay, firewood. We bought in our own firewood, you know, traveling through, and that's a really good, again, point to note. Okay, how's this? For the overflow, that's our view. Hello. We feel very thankful that it's completely booked out because we actually wanted the overflow because you've just got all this space. <laughs> Jasper can run around, our neighbors, you know, 25 meters away from us, and then that's it. The overflow, it's very quiet here at the moment, isn't it? Yes. So calm before the storm, right, eh? Rear wheel bag. From the Goldie, when we left, my brother, Gooey, thank you, mate, got me all of this firewood. He said, I want you to take this. I want you to go out to Uluru. And when you get out there, light a fire, take a photo, grab a wine, and send it to me. So, <laughs> so that's what we're doing. This is uh, awesome. Jasper, I think that's enough for you. You don't, don't want to overdo it. Look at him, his muscles. Over there. Oh, yeah. Doing good, My mate. legs carry all the weight, so oh. then my arms don't have to hold it. All right, can you bend down with your knees and just put it there? You can see Jasper and I have already just walked around the campsite, found all these little twigs. That's our kindling. We have got the new fire pit. We did have the previous one, didn't we, Jasper? Yes, but. We did. It was a little bit too small. There's a mini one. But to be honest, if you're, if you're just cooking on it, great. But if you're wanting to actually feel a bit toasty as well, then 
you need to get the bigger one. So give we'll more. give it a run. We'll let you know how it goes. But I'm sure after I've watched some reviews on YouTube and all that jazz, it looks like it's it's been a, a good deal for most people. You want some more? Right, eh? Here we go. I've got to save some for Kings Canyon as well. <sighs> that right, we have got <laughs> heaps. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe let's let's leave it at that for now. Go on, muscles. Get over there. This is actually not that heavy. Be aware of the surroundings too. You obviously can't collect firewood from the national park. That is a big no-no. Mm -hmm. But uh, some good wood there too. Yeah, <laughs> but there are certain stops along the way that you could definitely stock up on your firewood. And if you are in the overflow like we are, you are going to want to have a fire. This time around, they've got signage up to say that all fires must be within a contained fire pit mm -hmm. that's at least 30 centimetres off the ground. Great. So good to so, know. Yeah, so make sure you've got a fire no ground pit. Fires. Last time you were allowed to build your own sort of rock mm. circle, not this time. Yep. Okay, Diesel, we've spoken about communications. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in and around Ulara, the campground here, and even in and around parts of Uluru and the National Park, we're with Telstra. There is Telstra service. Yep. I can't talk about the other providers because we're not 100% sure on that, but definitely a little bit of Telstra. We've obviously got the Starlink, which is amazing. And, game changer. And, yeah, it gives us Everyone access Everyone throws everywhere. That, that term around, but it's a game changer. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. Yeah, good to note that when you drive out to Katajuta, which is a further 50 kilometres down the road from Uluru, there is no service whatsoever, and that is signed everywhere, even on the, uh, the big road signs out there. As far as safety goes, though, there are installations of emergency service yeah beacons with satellite phones and yep. uh, first aid kits and emergency buttons so depending on the walks you're on and where you are yep. there is there's plenty of help within distance from where you are that you could probably access if it was urgent. Yep, great idea. And if you do have a uh, personal locator beacon or a Garmin or a Zolio, definitely or have that. an iPhone 14 Pro, now in Australia and New Zealand, huh. it's caught up with the rest of the oh, world wow. in that you can trigger a satellite call and triple zero. So details Amazing. around that you'd need to look into and find out for yourself, but that has just launched in the last couple of weeks. Amazing, that is awesome. Let's talk about services that yeah. are available here, Katie. So there is a fire department, there's a police department. Mm -hmm. All road rules and all your normal rules apply. Yep. Don't think you can come out and run a mark, you know, the Wild West. Uh, it, it is the Wild West, that's for sure, but uh, yeah, you want to obey the laws. There are radars, speed cameras, yep. police patrolling this area, and there's also alcohol restrictions, as Katie mentioned. So you want to just check all that information out and obey by the rules. Yes. There is a medical center. Yes, there is. That has a Starlink on top of their yeah. roof. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> yeah. And there is, a, as you said, the full service supermarket, yep. and next to that is an ATM, ANZ operated, mm -hmm. and there is also a post office there as well yes there a is. number of restaurants yeah and a cafe as well called Ez wok yes takeaway asian foods looks fantastic yeah great name <laughs> love it there's also a couple of really lovely boutiques that sell some awesome stuff actually i got my beanie and scarf from there last time we were out here yes so pretty much everything that you could want for really in the complex. It's like a mini village, isn't it? It is. There's a full tourist information center where you can book all of your tours. So moving on to that and looking at mm -hmm. what's available, you can hire cars, uh, you can hire bikes, you can go on Segway tours, you can go on camel tours, you can go on <laughs> motorbike tours, you can go on helicopter tours, you can go on fixed wing plane tours. Yeah. I mean, walking tours, it is incredible the different options you've got to access Uluru, the National Park, yeah. and the immediate surroundings. It, there's a free shuttle bus in the Ayers Rock Resort in this facility that takes you from the campgrounds to the different areas. Yeah. It, it's amazing. Yeah, there is so much to do. They also offer free activities as well. Everything from kids crafting activities to bush tucker talks. There is so much on offer that is free. and. Within the campground resort as well, there's also daily free movies. So they do a lot to keep you mm. entertained. You couldn't do it all anyway. And then no. of course, there's some of the, the premium experiences like the amazing field of light experience wow. that we did last time we were out here. They have a, a new show uh, that is a dream time story show with 
I don't know, hundreds of drones that just looks absolutely incredible. So you really could fill your days and nights. Look, the reason why we didn't go and, and cover the drone show, uh, the Dreamtime show, the new show, is because there is a limit yeah. on age there. I think it might yes, be... Yes. Kids over 10. 10? Yeah. yeah. So Jasper being six, that'll have to wait for a another trip. Yeah and so we are planning another trip and we were talking about this yesterday when we were in exploring the National Park. We do want to come back and do the full base walk that is 10.6 kilometres mm -hmm. and we'd love to ride around on bikes as a family that would be a completely new experience for us. We're gonna to have to get Jasper a bike and get him <laughs> practicing. We travelled a bike around Australia for the first two years and he barely rode it. Well so. he did with the training wheels on and then we took the training wheels off and uh, he wasn't happy. Crash and yeah. burn and that was it you know if he yeah. can't get something straight away he's done so we're trying to manage that but he will be on a bike next time we come here exactly yes now with the base walk it is 10.6 kilometers you can do the entire thing or you can do sections of it so they've broken into different walks that feature different parts of that incredible landscape as well and accessible yes so if you're with a mobility device or you need that uh, flat level access it's amazing how well they have set this up. Yeah, it yeah. is just awesome. Something else to make sure you do when you are in the National Park is stop by the Cultural Centre. Fantastic. And there is a brilliant art gallery there as well. It just showcases some wow. amazing pieces of artwork. And then around the base walk, you will meet many of the lovely locals who are selling their own art pieces. Mm -hmm. And that in itself is an awesome experience. And really great. We met some of the youth as well, some of yeah. the kids out here that were <laughs> very... Tick they, they were They were doing tick these ones. In, in tick tock at the rock, they called it. Yes. Uh, so I, I think, you know, not only should you be respecting the culture when you're out here, mm. make an effort to say hi, yeah. you know, go and introduce yourself, talk about the art, find out what it is about, hear their stories. There's no richer experience than learning from this culture when you're in this area of such, you know, significance. Fantastic. Yeah, and, and what an awesome opportunity for us all to actually be able to come out here and experience mm. that in this environment. It's Love it. Brilliant. Parks Pass, let's talk oh, about yes. that. Yes, yes, good thinking. Okay, you do need a National Parks Pass. Now this is a separate pass. It doesn't fall under any other national parks. It doesn't fall under the other Northern Territory parks. It is separate to the Uluru Katajuta National Parks park mm -hmm. and you can easily get that online they offer a three-day pass they offer an annual pass if you do get the three-day pass you can actually get two bonus days when you're out here you can uh, talk to the lovely rangers at the entry station and they will add on another two days and i guess they've done that because Probably over time, people have come out staying for three days, realised how incredible it is, and then yep. needed a couple of extra days to explore. Fantastic. So that's a good tip. And kids are free. Kids are free. Amazing. Yeah, which is really Don't awesome. Don't hear that very often. Now, there's a great app that goes along with that National Parks Pass, and I would definitely recommend downloading that. And there is also an Uluru Birds app. So if you're a Twitcher, so you love Twitcher. checking out the bird life, then get that Uluru Birds app and uh, see how many you can tick off as well. There is literally no one here. So we thought, well, then let's get ourselves the view of a lifetime. <laughs> My gosh, how good is that? It is lunch. Not Hello. Every day you have that out your uh, kitchen window. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Amazing. All right, look at that. Oh, healthy. We're even doing a little bit of work. Got the Starlink up. How's that for a spot? How are you going, little man? Good. A few flies, but that's all right. Yep. Oh, wow. This is incredible. Wow. Awesome. Okay, let's talk about the campground. Okay. Um, what we haven't covered off yet. Obviously, we are in the overflow. Now, our tip would be, if you don't require power and water, don't book. Yep. And that's our hot tip. Just arrive here and hope that the overflow is open. They do only allow camping in the overflow when the actual caravan mm -hmm. park is fully booked. Uh, so if you're coming out of peak time, then chances are the overflow won't be open. Mm -hmm. But obviously across winter, this is the peak time to be out here. This yeah. is when everybody comes out. 
And as quiet as it is, there's still 300 plus campsites in there that were fully booked. So, yes. you know, it, it shows you that in the real height, it is, it is really bustling out here, yep. but there is so much space in the overflow, for, especially if you've got kids, the kids can kick the ball around. If you've yep. got a dog with you, you can go for a walk, you can have a fire, yep. you can put your awning out without hitting your neighbour. Yeah, it's it, awesome. It's our preference. It definitely yep. is. Now, this time around, the generator noise from the big power station mm -hmm. that powers the entire area was a lot louder, I would say, than last time so we were out It's audible, here. definitely. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it just you becomes sort of there. White, white noise. noise. Yeah. Yeah. So the the payoff is that, but for us, that's not a big deal at all. Um, something else just to... got louder. <laughs> Maybe because we 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 stopped talking. That's funny. But anyway, yeah. Something else to know is that there are other accommodation options. There's little cabins as well. Mm -hmm. and you can also come. Oh gosh, we've seen everybody from tents to swags, to you name it, rooftop campers. They accommodate all styles of travellers. All right, we can also say that if you um, need to come out uh, and use by plane, and there's an oh, yes. airport here, so you, you can do that and then hire a car and obviously book into accommodation. There's some great packages there. Yep. We better wrap this up because I reckon that Weber is ready. I what reckon else? It, one last very important point. The whole of Ulara is Come in if you want. dog friendly. Come Look on. at you in your jammies. Oh, you're okay, in your stay slippers. Over there. Good All boy, right. stay on the tidy turf. <laughs> the whole of Ulara is dog friendly. You can bring your dogs to the Ayers Rock Resort campground as well. Obviously, you can't take them into the national park because it's a national park. But if you're traveling with a cat, this entire region is non-cat friendly. Uh, the only thing that we could put it down to is I guess cats being such incredible predators. Mm, there's plenty uh, of wildlife. If, you, if they're not contained, that yeah, there's yeah. plenty of bird life here that would yeah. um, they'd make a meal of, I guess. So yeah, that's just the good only to thing know we can think of. For planning ahead. All right. I think we've covered everything off. Okay, Holy. we hope so. And if we haven't, <laughs> let us know. We will talk about vehicle preparation, uh, the tools, and and what yeah. we carry to make sure well pre travel yes. and then while we're on the road what we do to yep. make sure that we're doing our best to be prepared and yeah and maintain as much you know safe traveling as we can awesome well, we're about check. to do roads uncharted as well uh, coming up which is we're exciting going where no other feel good has ever been yes all right let's check out the weber okay let's do it. that's why he's come out <laughs> you're, you're hungry the GoPro. Mate. hello mate you good Yay. it's a little bit chilly isn't it it is chilly hang on one second honey yeah, here we go. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Oh. Ooh, could do with a little bit more, I think. Yep. I might just give him a little turn. Okay, and we'll turn it up a little bit, I think. Okay, one last thing. Because there always is. And because the damper needs probably another 15 minutes. I might have had it set just a little bit too low. Mm. So I'm thinking that we're going to hit somewhere between 50 minutes to an hour. Right cooking time and then we'll, we'll show you the results. It's but like watching it, paint dry isn't it when you're hungry? <laughs> Come on! It does look good though. Okay the last thing is that come prepared to do a really early morning mm. and check out the sunrise at Uluru. Stunning. Incredible and make sure that you get a sunset in as well. Yeah. Okay so they're the two other things that are free and will absolutely impact you mm. and will again leave those memories that will last forever. So yeah. that would be our tip. It really is, we say it, you know, and I'm sure you've heard it from anybody else who's been out here. There is something so special mm. about this environment and it does something to you, whether you're consciously aware of it or not, it changes you on the inside. So it is something that we honestly believe everybody should come and experience. Love it. And one more thing, we went and had breakfast oh, yes. early mo one morning at Katajuda before Jasper and I took off on a walk. That too was just awesome, you know, yeah. just a couple of bowls, a little bit of muesli, awesome. Here we go. There we go. So it's a little bit lighter than usual, but looks pretty good on the bottom. I'm hungry, I'm hungry. I reckon we just call it and see. I stuck a knife in earlier and it was a little bit still wet on one side so I turned it around and it's probably had another good, gosh, 15, 20 minutes you think, Paul? Yeah, I reckon we're just, just hit an hour and five minutes, so. 
Okay, turn the Weber off. Let's cut it and eat it. Love Stop. it. Yes! <laughs> you think the kid's hungry? Hey! That is fantastic. Oh, perfect. Right, eh? Let's taste it. Oh, bit of butter. Oh, yes. Thank you. Give us some. Oh, that is good, cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> White chocolate chip. Yum. No, it matches Jamie. Good. Good boy. No, good. Where's the bin? Mum's getting everything ready. Where's the bin? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit cool, isn't it? Got it cut. Oi! <laughs> Sneaky. Okay. Here we go. Getting brekkie ready. Has a cup of tea coming along, Katie? Oh, so good. Need it too. It's a bit chilly. Beautiful. <laughs> Mate, no more Milo. Sneaky Milo's. I've been watching you. I'll get you some milk in a second, babe. So warm up some milk for you. Yep. So we don't actually have the milk frother. I do like it frothed, but the induction will do the exactly same thing, just a bit unfrothed. Okay. And hot. Alright, now. Hot unfrothed. I'm gonna pour some really hot water just Sort of unfrothed. We just need you to step back, babe. Yay. that Milo. There he is. Now I'm just gonna spoon that. That'll be daddy so that the flies don't. No flies in the tea Jasper. We don't want flies in our tea do we? <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> that noise it does something to mum and I. It's mm. like the, st mm. oh, the stirring noise. Mm. Scratching noise. Okay. Tea proof. Uh, Lie proof teas. Um, that's going to be for you. I'll get you some water. Thank you. Oh, that well good? perfect. Yay. Yummy. Mm. So you're going to do some cranberries on your weenies? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Mm. Catajuta. Whew. Tell you what, when you're doing the walk, there's some really steep sections. Mm. How'd you go, Jasper? Uh, yeah, we sort of made it. <laughs> sort of made it. Well, you made it back. We made it back, that's right. We didn't do the whole walk. Okay, we're at Catajuta. This is also known as the Olgas, mm -hmm. and it is a must visit. If you're coming to Uluru, you're yeah. going to go to the rock, then you need to also the come rock. out here because it'll absolutely blow your mind yeah. just the scale oh, it of these rocks. It is ethically beautiful, yeah. Katajuda, and it's 50 kilometres further into the National Park from Uluru, which is remarkable because you can see it off in the distance and you can just tell how huge it is. Mm. And then when you get out here, at its highest peak, it's, I think it's just under 200 metres taller than Uluru. And you just stand That's at the base relief. and look up and it, it is incredible. Yeah. Um, so it is a must see. It's so beautiful. Our recommendation will be to do the walk if you're a family mm. or you maybe don't have, you know, 
a lot of endurance. Yep. Uh, do a shorter walk, and that's yep. the Walper Gorge. Walper Gorge. It's spectacular. It, it is truly these towering cliff faces that split apart as you mm -hmm. walk through. Yeah. If you come in the morning, it's quite dark. If you come in the afternoon, you'll get a lot more sunlight in yeah, there. Yeah, that's a good tip. And talk about a place to come and make you feel insignificant. <laughs> Which is actually a really great thing yep. because then you realise that the whole worries of the world aren't that big yeah. because 500 million years ago these rocks right. formed here and then you're just this speck of dust. Totally. It makes you appreciate what you have. It makes you get on with it. Yeah. I just think it's just such a moving experience. If you can stop and reflect 10, 15 minutes mm -hmm. and be thankful yep. and try to pray that a fly doesn't land on yeah. you. <laughs> In and then time? be thankful for that. Exactly. <laughs> the only thing is these damn flies. But besides that, it mm. is, it's a truly moving place. It's an amazing experience. It is. What I find is that I don't think of anything. Like, I literally don't think of anything when I'm out here. I am just so in the moment of being in yeah. this environment that mm. you just, you can't not be in the moment when you're out here. And, and mm. I... I don't know, I'm sure it's almost cliche, like you hear it all the time about there's something special out here, but there is, there's a feeling out here, there's a connection out here, isn't there? It just is incredible. We love it. What do yeah, you think, do. Jasper? Uh, it's amazing. It is amazing. He's, Jasper was the one that was saying, we've got to do a hike, we've got to do a hike, we've got to do a hike, we've got to make time to do a hike. Mm. So it's so awesome. The boys ran off and did that and I got a little bit of work done, which is awesome because we bought the Starlink. Yeah, look, we wanted to actually give it a go and see how it would go out yeah. here. And we did a live on Facebook. Yeah, I know. Which it's is wild. generally the one that's it's a, good point. a bit like that and it was perfect. Well, there's zero service at Katajuda zero phone service and it's yeah. written all over the maps as well so you need to be prepared for that if you are coming out without Starlink you know if you want to bring your um, we've got our you know like our in-reach mini as well so yeah. that is a good tip but yeah to have the Starlink and do that was awesome ah, so good all right now we're going to head back to camp yeah uh, and we might actually stop by all the room we once have more because it's just so amazing oh all right. it just doesn't matter how many times you come in it is just still breathtakingly beautiful every time it looks like it's just been photoshopped there on the landscape it's yeah. incredible all right let's do it thanks for watching please do like subscribe and share our channel and if you'd like more information on full-time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly Go RV magazine articles, and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family, and happy trails. Still, that's great. Ow. Ow. <laughs> okay, here we go. Catajuda. <laughs> I'm still looking for one. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, I found the right chair. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Your very little butt. I'll give you a 10 second head start. Oh wow, that's generous of you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight.